Just seeing myself in this outfit, I see how both my life and this channel could have gone in such horrible, horrible direction. I look like a jackass. <laughs> be allowed in daddy's box again. Mint Julie. Being cursed with roughly six feet of height, I can never achieve my full dream of becoming a professional jockey. But my equestrian pursuits are not entirely limited as, like many honest Americans, I now have a thriving horse breeding industry. So believe it or not, this is a very exciting time for me. Breeding for the shortest humans possible. It's derby season, people. It is time for the, I don't know, whatever, the 2021 Kentucky Derby. And like with every derby, there's only one cocktail that we should all be drinking. I think horse gambling is the funniest form of gambling, hands down. More synonymous with racing than glue factories, the mint julep has its roots much, much before the Derby itself. In fact, it started roughly 200 years before the Kentucky Derby ever even staked its claim to it. So while the julep started much, much before the current iteration of it that we know, it was much more of a medicinal kind of drink and would be served oftentimes with brandy, gin, rarely would it have bourbon in it or a whiskey. Now, to make this cocktail, you could use a highball glass or you could use really any glass. I think that for a drink like this though, tradition is a little more important than with other cocktails. So if you can, I would say to get your hands on one of these. This one is copper. I think traditionally they're gonna be made with a sterling silver. However, either way though, you'll see that that is gonna make this cocktail chillingly cold, which given all the crushed ice inside of it, is gonna do a lot to transform and really change the way that you enjoy this cocktail. Additionally, you're gonna build this cocktail in the glass. So while you won't be able to see through it as I make it, I'll be pretty good at explaining things. Now mint is an interesting thing for cocktails and this is a pitfall I have fallen into many times because you should not muddle your mint. You can see back to my Deadly Premonition cocktail, a delicious, delicious drink which you can check out. I muddled my mint, which people told me I shouldn't do. And the best I've had this explained to me is by taking a leaf of mint. You know, you can look at it, you can express it, you can smell it, you can taste it, and before you do anything to it, it's gonna be kind of soft, it's gonna be a sharp flavor, but nothing overbearing. Um, it is the classic mint flavor, you know? You can touch it with your fingers, and you can feel the oils coming out a bit, and then you can taste it. It's simple, it's mint, it's sharp. But try biting into it, and you're gonna get a much different flavor. It's gonna be bitter, more vegetal, and not really what you want in your cocktail. So while a lot of recipes and bartenders might tell you to muddle the mint, I would suggest against it, as it's not gonna give you the flavor you quite want. So grab any old piece of mint, and you're gonna want eight to 10 leaves of mint in here. Really depending on size, smaller, go toward eight, even seven, I would say, as these look kind of big. Drop these into your glass. Now, we have our mint in the glass. Now it's time for the sugar. In here, as you can expect, there's even more debate on how to do this. Traditional people will say to use a sugar cube, nothing more. However, sugar cubes are used a lot in cocktails that predate refrigeration, meaning before we had ice in cocktails. So I will sometimes use a sugar cube with some simple syrup as well, but I don't like just a straight up sugar cube generally in any cocktail, like an old fashioned or something like that. It can be good, but I think that there's better ways to do it. So what I'm gonna do today, like I mentioned, is use a mixture of simple syrup and a sugar cube. This is going back to that idea of how we're using pebble ice. That's gonna cause a lot of dilution, which I'll touch on a bit more when we get to the whiskey. But basically what you need to know here is that the sugar cube is gonna be more of a slow release for the drink, while this is gonna be a upfront kind of just sweetener straight up with the stuff mixed together. So grab a sugar cube, put it on in there, just on top of stuff, you know, no need to uh, mix it up now. Now grab your simple syrup. This is just a simple one-to-one -one syrup. You could try Demerara, you could use two-to-one rock candy. 
I don't think any of that's necessary here. And because I have the sugar cube, I'm gonna do just a quarter ounce. If I wasn't using that, I would say probably a half would be good or so, but again, make the mint jewel that you like. Now before you mix your bourbon into the glass, you're gonna to wanna to muddle up that mint and the sugar to get them to just the right kind of consistency for mixing that bourbon on it. And just like feeding the sugar cube to a purebred horse. Like if I ever bred a horse well enough to enter the derby, I would name it Mr. Hands just to see, you know. I'm like, I'm like, that'd be great. Just the winner of the Kentucky Derby, you know, Mr. Hands. Up next in the final ingredient of the cocktail, Ice might be counted as an ingredient here, but the final typical ingredient of the drink is gonna be your whiskey or bourbon. Because I think few times does it matter what whiskey you use, but again, with the mint julep, it's the one time I think tradition isn't necessary, but I think it goes a long ways. Today, I am using the Derby's Choice itself, Woodford Reserve. You can use anything here, although I would suggest a higher proof bourbon. Why do I suggest a higher proof bourbon? Because the mint julep is a cocktail made with lots and lots of pebble or crushed ice. It's gonna represent way more of the volume of what you're drinking. But as you sip the cocktail, slowly or quickly, the ice will melt. I, in fact, am using the uh, Distiller Select Kentucky Derby 147. We're gonna use two ounces of this. Some people will make their drink stronger, going up to three ounces. Really, because the cocktail is so simple, I think you can do that, just depending on how much you want. I mean, listen, I don't drink much Woodford, so I don't know how to compare it to Benchmark Woodford, but that's some good-ass bourbon. Super smooth, so if you're not typically a bourbon drinker or whiskey drinker, try this shit. So, as I mentioned, you can do two ounces of bourbon. I'm going for Woodford because that's the, you know, Kentucky favorite, that's the choice of the race, but dealer's choice for this cocktail, really. This is my mama's favorite bourbon too, that's a good point, as my brother pointed out. As I was training my race horses, my mom would throw empty balls of Woodford at me, telling me, this isn't a thoroughbred, what the fuck are you thinking? But hey, it made me stronger. And as a result, it made the horses stronger. Bird. Right, two ounces of bourbon. Now, time for the ice, which some would argue is a cocktail ingredient here. I feel weird calling ice an ingredient, but it is essential that you use pebble or at the very least crushed ice. So get your little scoop of ice and we're going to start off with just one for starters because we're going to snow cap it. We have to mix the cocktail first, otherwise knocking ice everywhere. Now I'm going to grab my little spoon. I'm gonna stir this for a bit, give it some dilution, some chilling, and then we're gonna add the iconic snow cap. Again, not too much. You don't wanna dilute this cocktail too much before you do it. Now to start capping it with a bit more ice so we can get the beautiful snow cap. So those interns are gonna be fresh ice. So that right there is the iconic kind of snow cone of this cocktail. One last thing before you get going, you're gonna to wanna to garnish it with a little bouquet of mint. There. Just gonna give it a little slap, make it come to life, brighten up. Stick it on in there, get your straw of choice, and make sure you put the straw very close to the mint so that every time you go in for a sip, you're gonna inhale some of that, that spearmint beauty. There we have the classic mint julep. Oh, it's so, I, I like mine a bit sweeter admittedly, so there's more sugar in there, but the way that it's just sweetened bourbon with that little bit of mint, you, this drink is essentially kind of sweet bourbon. You know, it's got just mint and sugar kind of floating in there, which doesn't sound like that much of a cocktail, if anything, which is, why I think it was used so long ago for its health purposes, but man, it's just so delicious. And you wouldn't think that, but the bourbon just speaks so much here. You get that kind of woodiness, that deep, deep character, that the brightness of the mint and the sugar just cuts and it's so snappy at the same time. 
and coming up for that mint every time, the bouquet really is essential here on top because you get a lot of mint in the drink, but that's going to be a little bit more muddled and you get that freshness of the scent here. I will say, I think that this is uh, the second best cocktail I've made related to horses on this channel, or on Drink Up as a whole. Mix yourself up a julep, go bet on some horses, and you know, enjoy it, man. I'm really excited to be back making cocktails on this channel. I hope that you all will tune in for the future ones. I have a bunch of exciting things planned. If you like this, then you can find me on Twitch where I do a lot of streaming. I stream everything from Fortnite to Pokemon to me just chatting with people, making friends with the audience. You know, I like to interface with you guys as much as I can. Ooh.